Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today is Good Friday and of course we remember the suffering, the crucifixion and the death of Jesus Christ. Good Friday, good and that he paid the price for our sins on the cross at Calvary. We're going to sing our first hymn now which is There is a green hill far away outside the city wall. The Gospel reading that I'm going to read is from Mark chapter 15 verses 21 to 41. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander Rufus, was passing his way from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Biding up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, saying, So, you're going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and teachers of the law mocked him amongst themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified him also hid insults on him. At noon, the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sapacini, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they listened. Listen, he's calling Elijah. Some ran filled a sponge with vinegar and put it on the staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him. 
he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus braved his last. The curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women had come up with him to Jerusalem, were also there. This is the Gospel of Christ. Lord, as we look to your word now, give us a deeper understanding, eyes to see and ears to hear, and hearts to believe. Amen. I suppose Good Friday is a day I've struggled with for years in knowing that what happened to Jesus, I find it very difficult. We're in a very difficult and dark time as well. We think about being in lockdown, many ill, not least our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. And of course our hearts go out to those who have lost lost ones at this time due to COVID-19. Dark times. Dark days. Well, when we look down the hallway of human history, we can see that there's lots of dark days. Some would deem the wars or bombings, especially atomic bombings, and my mind goes to Hiroshima. Or we might think about the Twin Towers coming down, or other terrorist attacks and wars, and of course now we're in this global pandemic. If you're any kind of history student, or red history, one has to admit that there's been lots of dark days throughout history. However, from the standpoint of those who are close to Jesus Christ and seen and heard and took part in his life, those six hours at his crucifixion were the darkest day in their history. Even cosmos went quiet, as if nature was crying out. Pilate ordered the cruel beating for Jesus. The soldiers mocked him and placed a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus was given a robe of purple, not to symbolise royalty, but to ridicule him. Without going on to see what Jesus endured, this incredible painful agony, and then added to the shame of what he had to bear before he died. But there came a time, a time it seemed as if darkness covered the whole earth. And while Jesus was being mocked, little did they realise that this darkness would soon not only settle during the day, but it would also be darkness in their souls. Without going on, we can see that Jesus endured incredible painful agony, and to add to the shame of what he had to bear, he died. But there came a time when it seemed as if darkness covered the whole earth. And yes, while Jesus was being mocked, Little did they realise, those people that mocked him, as the darkness settled in the sky, that darkness would come into their souls too. With looking at the suffering and darkness, Jesus was facing, but we can also feel darkness for those who took Jesus down from the cross. What must they have felt? Defeat? Hopelessness? And perhaps the stillness of the ultimate an absolute failure. For here was the body of a man that they literally put their entire hope in. Their lives, they trusted in him and now he was dead. And I had a feeling that there were many, many tears, perhaps even choking wailing, that poured every bit of the life from them. As the day progressed into night, there were more, more that were, who are beginning to return. And John finds a wave to the grave. Peter shakes off his feelings of failure and humbly comes. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Madeline find their way back. The energy had been emptied away. Their red eyes had been exhausted of tears. The energy of tears 
have been replaced with deep feelings of resignation. The fact is now they are facing more darkness than ever before, despite that the sun has returned to the skies. Take a look around at the world and just observe. On the surface, our country faces a lot of darkness in addition to COVID-19. There is so much dark depression, broken dreams, limiting illness, broken friendships, paralyzing financial pressures, mental weariness, family rifts. Of course I could carry on the list and the list would probably get steadily longer and longer. But the fact of the matter is that during all these dark times of darkness, God is at work, working life out, if we will just let him. So instead of struggling with the darkness, let's turn our attention to the Lord. There are few who are willing to give him a proper burial in the gospel accounts. But for every man who turned his back on God, there was somebody who turned their face to God. For every cunning Cyphus, there was a daring Nicodemus. Every cynical Herod, there is a questioning Pilate. For every dirty mouthed thief, there is a truth seeking one. And for every spitting soldier, there is a noble centurion. And for every betraying Judas, there is a faithful John. Good Friday is one of the darkest days in history. It was a day when the Son of God surrendered his life for the sake of humanity. Here he was being beaten until he was barely recognisable. He was mocked and cursed, but spoke no words of resentment or anger instead of asking his heavenly Father to forgive those who hurt him. He hung on the cross with the weight of the world on his shoulders. Of course there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin, for he alone could unlock the gates of heaven to let us in. Yes, he was given vinegar just to wet his parched throat, and then he received a drink. He said those final words, it is finished and died. The skies darkened and the earth roared. The temple curtain was ripped in half from top to bottom at the sound of his last breath. Jesus died one of the most terrible, gruesome and painful deaths in history. But you know, he chose to do that for you and for me. When Jesus said, it is finished, it didn't only mean that it was the end of his earthly ministry. He was declaring that all our sins had been washed away by his blood. The Greek word, it is finished, is translated tesislately, which means something that's stamped on the bottom receipts, meaning paid in full, paid completely. We all have an overwhelming sin debt with God. And the penalty is death. There is no possible way we could ever pay this overwhelming and massive debt. When Jesus hung on the cross, he paid the price for our freedom and for our redemption. He paid the price for you and me. Your freedom was bought by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus Christ. It wasn't just a down payment but paid in full. Jesus finished his work on the cross and left nothing undone. I know from pastoral ministry, sometimes we forget that it is finished. We live in the shadow of sin and guilt, constantly thinking our sins are too big to forgive. Listen, there is no sin too big or too small for God's grace to cover. Jesus' ultimate sacrifice paid the price for your wrongdoing, and that's pretty awesome. Not only did Jesus pay the everlasting price for the debt of sin, he made it possible for those who believe in him to have that sure and certain hope 
of eternal life, of heaven. Let's have faith in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished in that redeeming work on the cross where he paid the price for our wrongdoing and sin. Let's pray. Lord, help us to trust in your redeeming work, what you accomplished on the cross. We want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, that you paid the price for our sins, that we can know our sins washed away and the sure and certain hope of eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to sing another hymn now, which is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the going to say the Apostles Creed if you know the words please join with me I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and of earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to prayer. Dear God, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure so that we could be set free. Lord, we thank you that Jesus paid the price and gave such a great sacrifice to offer us the gift of eternal life. And Lord, we thank you that you desire not the death of any sinner, but that all would come to you in faith, that we should be converted and live. Help us never to take things for granted. Help us never to take this wonderful, huge gift of love for granted. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. Forgive us for being too busy or too distracted by one thing or another or not fully recognising what you have freely given and what you have done for us. Thank you Lord that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice we can live in freedom. Thank you that sin and death has been conquered and that your power is everlasting. And thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished. For we know what's to, to come and death has lost its sting. We praise you for you making all things new. We do pray for our National Health Service at this time, treating so many with COVID-19. We pray that there will be sufficient resources to treat. Give wisdom to those that are involved in research and finding best cures possible. We pray for all those who are seeking to treat the ill and sick. Give them wisdom, compassion, insight. We pray for our Prime Minister too at this time, for his healing and recovery. And help us to look to you in faith and truth. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to sing our final song, which is Beautiful One.
captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you You opened my eyes to your wonders and you You captured my heart with this love Please join us for our Sunday service which will put online for 11 o'clock, Easter Sunday. It would be wonderful to worship together, although we we'll do it from our own homes. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.